烧，银铃声，卡埃拉铃，阿萨卡哈拉铃，扎卡拉铃，烧埃铃铃声。Namaste. <laughs> well, it's almost the end of my working vacation in Sri Lanka. In a couple of days, I go back to India, which is going to be a great relief, because I'll be in my house. I'll have my kitchen, and my pets, <laughs> the animals in the garden, and、uh, be surrounded by sadhus once again.、Uh, the place I'm in is very nice. But it's just mundane people, you know, coming and going on vacation and like that. And even though it's very beautiful, the vibes are not really optimal, huh? But it was good for me to hold myself up in my room and get a lot done. So I want to talk about life, human life, because animal life is not really fit. For self-realization, but in human life, we have the intelligence and also the drive to realize the self, and that's what it's really all about. Now, you might say, and a lot of people have said to me, "My life is so chaotic, and there's so much craziness and suffering in the world that I find it very hard to meditate." I can't really control or still my mind, and so I don't see how I can attain self-realization in this life, this human life. Well, that's okay, <laughs> because the end of this life is the beginning of the next life. Try to understand. The I Ching says, all phenomena occur. In six stages, and the seventh brings return. So human life is like that too. You have、uh, what's that called? You have conception, gestation, birth, growth. Creation of byproducts like work and reproduction, and dwindling and death; those are the six stages, and they are also present in the Buddha's Paticca Samuppada. And then, what is the seventh stage? Back to the beginning. Go back, Jack. Do it again. Yeah, wheel turning round and round. So. This is the cycle of samsara, and we are all caught in that cycle. So the end of this life is the beginning of the next life, and some people say, "Well, I don't believe in the next life, YOLO.、Huh? You only live once." And of course, this isn't true. The Buddha said, "Here's a nice quote from the Buddha: Bhikkhus, this lifespan of human beings is short." One has to go on to the future life. One should do what is wholesome, and lead the holy life. For one who has taken birth, there is no avoiding death. One who lives long, bhikkhus, lives a hundred years or a little longer. That's it. Huh? Nobody gets out of here alive. <laughs> well, of course we're still alive. That's a silly quote from Jim Morrison, because the death that everybody is so afraid of,、uh, and which is absolutely inevitable for everyone, is only the decay and death of the gross body, the food body, anamaya kosha. But besides the food body. We have the energy body, the pranamaya kosha, the mental body, manomaya kosha, the intelligence body or will body, 
the Vijnana Maya Kosha, and finally the Ananda Maya Kosha, the bliss body. <laughs> this is there in everyone. But because we're focused so much on the gross body, we don't take steps to develop the others or to develop awareness of them because they're there and they're functioning perfectly or we wouldn't exist. The gross body is just a lump of meat. It can't do much by itself. It needs the higher bodies, the energy body, the mental body, the intelligence body, the bliss body to function as a human being, as a living being. So every living being, every sentient being has these higher bodies. And these bodies persist after the death of the gross body. How do we know this? Well, the proof is very interesting. The subtle bodies record the activities of the present life. And based on the quality of those activities, they become the seed for the next life. Sanchita karma. Sanchita means stored up. The stored up karma for the future life is based on the activities of this life. Huh? Well, you might, you might ask, well, what are the activities of this life then? And that's called the prarabdha karma. Prarabdha means ripe. So when the karma is ripe, it manifests in our life. So the things that we did in the past, they form the basis, they drive the activities of this life. And the things we do in this life, the attitudes we cultivate and so on, become the seed for the next life. So Buddha is saying there is a next life. Don't behave like there isn't a next life. Huh? Maybe this gross body only lives once. But in our subtle forms, we have been through many, many, many lifetimes on all levels of reality. Huh? So deep down, we know this. And then he says, one should live a wholesome life, a holy life, a whole life. Uh -huh. Not just the gross body, but the whole. All the bodies should be cultivated. All the chakras should be developed. All the yogas should be practiced. See, and all the realizations should be attained. Then one goes to a higher destination. Uh, the Buddha says, in, in, in reference to becoming, that one achieves a higher destination by tuning the mind, tuning the consciousness to a refined quality. But what is a refined quality? It means pure. It means sattvic. There are three gunas, three modes of nature in the prakriti. And these are the sattva guna, the mode of goodness, raja guna, the mode of passion, and tamaguna, the mode of ignorance. So of course, we see the world today, most people are in the tamaguna, the mode of ignorance. And then there's a few in the mode of passion, and they become like the leaders, the big stars, people like that. And then there's a very tiny, tiny, few uh, people who are in the mode of goodness, and they are the sages, the enlightened ones, the sadhakas, the spiritual masters, and so forth. They are just a tiny sliver of humanity. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, out of maybe 10,000 men, huh, one may try to attain the supreme. And out of 10,000 who try, maybe one succeeds. But still, in the, in the population, the world population now, of like, what is it, 7 billion? Going on 8 billion? That would mean there's 100,000 enlightened people around somewhere. Where are they? <laughs> your task, you know, if, your mission, if you choose to accept it, <laughs> is to find these people. Well, we would rather become one of these people. So becoming is when the mind and consciousness are tuned to a refined quality, the mode of goodness, sattva guna. And what is the sattva guna? 
It means meditation. It means knowledge. Huh? Uh, Shuddha Vidya. Shuddha Vidya is knowledge of the pure, knowledge of the holy, knowledge of the sacred and the divine. Huh? So by tuning the mind to this knowledge, by hearing this knowledge again and again from someone who knows, not just an academic. Huh? There are so many people, I'm here in Sri Lanka, and there, there are whole universities that do nothing but teach a completely botched version of the Buddha's teaching uh, based on the commentaries that were done about 1,200 years ago uh, by Buddha Ghosh and people like that after they burned all the original commentaries. So <laughs> the commentaries we have now are useless. Why? Because they treat Nibbana as a thing instead of as emptiness. They don't understand emptiness. They don't like emptiness. Emptiness is threatening to the ego, threatening to the mind. So they don't teach emptiness anymore. You can't go in a Buddhist temple anywhere and hear a lecture on emptiness. It just doesn't happen. So if you go back to the original suttas, they're all about emptiness. <laughs> emptiness is the elephant in the room in the original Buddha suttas. So this emptiness we have to cultivate. We have to contemplate. We have to meditate on emptiness, shunya, shunyata. Huh? Because emptiness is the root of consciousness. See, what is consciousness? Consciousness was defined famously by Werner Erhardt as a space where stuff shows up. <laughs> That's pretty good. I like that. But what is consciousness? Well, the Buddha says consciousness is of six kinds. Eye consciousness, ear consciousness, nose consciousness, tongue consciousness, body consciousness, and mind consciousness. The six senses. So without the senses and their objects, we don't have consciousness. What we have is awareness. Now, when you take this awareness, contemplate this awareness, and direct the awareness towards itself, turn, turn it around. Instead of going out through the senses, make the awareness go in and contemplate itself. Now, this is the fundamental meditation technique. This is the golden flower technique. We have a whole big series on that. So by this technique, anyone in just a few minutes can realize their self when they realize that I am separate from the body. I am pure awareness. I do not belong to this world. I belong in the spiritual world, the world of the formless, the immortal, eternal, never-ending world, beginningless, see? Because in conscious or awareness, there is no beginning or end, no boundaries, no individuality, no form, no nothing. Shunyata. So one should become comfortable with this shunyata. Then when death comes, you will recognize him. Oh, my old friend, emptiness. <laughs> so one should develop a tolerance or even a liking or a preference for this emptiness. And then at the time of death, one will not be in anxiety. One will not be frightened. Uh, this is simply our old friend, emptiness. <laughs> And we would sit on his back and ride off into the sunset. <laughs> or sunrise, actually, is better. So the end of this life is just the beginning of the next life. Yang yang vapi smaran bhavam, tyajatante kalevaram, tang tang evaiti konteya sada tad bhava bhavita. Whatever one remembers, or thinks of at the time of death 
is what one becomes in the next life. This is the seed. This is the, um, the beginning, actually, of the next life is the end of this life. So the end is actually the beginning. If we see like that, and we orient our whole life towards preparing for that transition, for that return, uh, after the six stages, then return. After the Paticca Samuppada, then again return, again begin, again create a body. But the body that we create, if we tune our consciousness to a high vibration, uh, to a refined quality, as the Buddha says, then next life will be so much better. Uh, we won't be stuck on this earth planet, which is a barrio, huh? <laughs> it's slum, <laughs> with all kinds of nasty people. So we can go to higher planets. And there, it's very easy because we have the facility to attain complete self-realization. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung. <laughs>